Put a smile on your face When you're moving from place to place, place. Good morning, good morning, morning Good morning, morning Good morning, Tobago And welcome back to the Tobago Updates Youth the Morning Show So we would have just seen the Junction Boys And their little kite flying group Luke, have you ever done kite flying? Probably back in the days when it was tiny and small, you know, when you actually went to the Mount Pleasant for the Easter day, they used to sell this, this, this um, kind of um, these animated looking kites that you were pushing the sticks and they just fly it. I think everyone used to buy that. So, you know, mm -hmm. we used to have those kites stuck up at home. But to do the big, big kites like we just saw, I don't think I ever had that experience. No, I have never had that experience. I was always more of an inside kind of girl, <laughs> sitting on inside with my mm -hmm. granny or something like that, or play with my dolls. Okay. But my cousins, I have a lot of male cousins. Mm -hmm. and and they always flying kite. So I would be the one to sit down there and hand them something. You know, say, Kaylee, pass the evil stick, pass this, pass mm -hmm. that. Because you know, I like organizations, so I have yes. everything here and I pass and everything for them to make the kite. So that was my kite flying experience. Mm -hmm. But then when they go in to fly the kite, I never really still go with them either because, you know, my granny wouldn't send me down oh. there with all the boys to have fly the kite. Have you ever made one, Kaylee? Because I remember back in the days in primary school when me and the boys was high, we used to use fix room at that time, fix mm. room, thread, and the garbage bag, the simple plastic bag would have used those to make the kite. Um, but you, you should really try it. It's therapeutic. It has its stressful moments, but, you know, the end result is always worth it. Mm -hmm. So tell us more about the um, kites flying that we would have saw at the Junction Boys. Well, I mean, as I said before, I've never really done that kite flying thing before. Mm -hmm. So it was something... Very new for me. I mean, it was quite interesting to see that they would have made such a huge kite. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he would have mentioned, but he said that the um, materials, they were sponsored by Tobago Gas Supplies. Okay. So the inside part for the kite, the internal part, they used aluminum. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could see that because yeah, of the, that. <laughs> the, the size of the kite, the mm -hmm. weight of the kite and that kind of thing. They had to get a lot of persons to be able to get the kite to fly because mm -hmm. of the weight of the yes. kite. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, yes, yes, and it looked good. It looked exciting mm -hmm. to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm, I'm so accustomed to the small kites, but the big ones. I really want to see the machinery behind that, like mm -hmm. up close and personal. And, um, you know, speaking of machinery, um, car show, Kelly, I know you were there. How was your car show experience? My car show experience was, it was quite nice. It was mm -hmm. my first time. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm not really that type of person, but, you know, I went this mm -hmm. year and I definitely enjoyed the car show experience. Mm -hmm. Um, at the complex and at the stadium as well. I think it was really nice. I mm -hmm. particularly enjoyed the drifting part of it. <laughs> that <laughs> was really, really day. nice, you know. When they come in, and all the dust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> coming, the tire dust coming up on our face. And all the noise. The and noise, noise, definitely the like that part. <laughs> Yes, because um, if you ever check any of my laptops from high school to now, I always had Need for Speed saved on my laptop. <laughs> um, my current laptop has Asphalt 8 saved. And I always love um, cars, more specifically the customizing aspect of the cars. You know, um, I, I, I love the paint jobs, you know, the rims. I always have a love for cars. I think it's because as a young person, I always loved watching Power Rangers when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So, you know, cars and motorbikes, they, I have a special love for it. And thankfully, I was the only ground from the Saturday I was there for the Venus Promotions car show, um, car and bike meet. So we had um, the Village Boys with their regular bikes that they would have customized. Then we had the motorbikes. We saw Mad Max there. And then, you know, I would have been there Sunday with the um, Shore Park firstly, and then I went to Dwight York Stadium, and it was really amazing. So, viewers, at this moment, we'll be getting a bit up close and personal about the car show experience so let's enjoy all right viewers so we are here at the shore park cultural complex with one of the young participants in this year's caribbean auto fest so tell us a bit about yourself and about your business um my name is nikolai peterkin i'm 20 years of age and i just have a passion for cars and it just take me to certain extents where I could have never imagined. I do um, EFI tuning, that's what my business is based on right now. And we're just here to show what, we, what we're doing and showcasing what we could do as this company. So, Imports Performance Source, what service can someone who likes to reach out to the business, what can they expect to receive from your business? Um, we do EFI tuning and most standalones. Uh, we do reflashing via HP tuners. We do vehicle maintenance, vehicle setup, and a lot of other things, as you can see on the banner listed, and yeah. So you're young, you're extremely young. What would have inspired you to start this business at such a young age? I mean, ever since I was small, I basically grew up in a garage, and like, it just built a passion for cars. My uncle had a, a, a S14, a black one, and it was like, 
driving inside the car, being a passenger, and going down the highway in boost, it was just, it was a different feeling. And like seeing all the cars in my yard, like we had Evo, Subaru, Skylines, a lot of different JDM stuff. So that's what kind of inspired me right now to do what I'm doing and make this move into this business world. Okay, great. So reaching out, how can people reach out to you? What are your contact numbers, your social media pages? Where are you located? Um, contact information, Instagram, Imports Performance House on Instagram. Um, contact info, 274-2287. Uh, basically, call, contact the number, and we could reach you anywhere that is a suitable place for you. So. so you're not located anywhere, but you could reach your customers? Yes, we can. We can via Trinidad, if you have a diner in Trinidad, Tobago, US, anywhere. So. Okay, great. So thank you very much for doing this interview with us and keep up the great work. <laughs>
It is the first time that we have been invited to a show. And it is a pleasure to come and cook some goat and enjoy the place. So are you all partaking in any of the categories here at the car show? Yeah, we, I, I, my son brought the, the, the race car and we were doing the um, best burnout. But I personally just come to relax, cook, enjoy myself. So it's really good to hear that you're enjoying the Tobago vibe. You know, Tobago is all about relaxation, that peace, and uh, most importantly, the food. So viewers, that was our family here. That curry, I could switch going right down my throat. So I could just imagine how great it's going to taste. So what is this right here? Goat meat, yeah, goat, goat. We now putting it in the pot. Watch the pot. So you're burning the curry right now? Okay, great. So viewers, the curry is burning at the moment. And this is a family here enjoying the auto car show. It is just amazing. The vibe is amazing. So take a look and see what's going on in the pot. So the goat is going in at the moment, yes. So viewers, you know, this is going to taste extremely well with a nice fluffy piece of bus-up shirt. Uh, I could just taste it in my mouth at the moment. <laughs> So viewers, this is proof that you don't need a beach side to have fun. We're having fun right here in the car park. We're having family lime. This is just an amazing experience, viewers. So this is the car show for 2023. All right, viewers, so we are here at the car show experience now. I know a lot of you can say you saw many vehicles throughout this car show, but how many of you can say that you saw a barbershop in a vehicle? So I'm here with the owner. Tell us a bit more about yourself and where you're from. So my name is Kyle Marichu from uh, Trinidad, Point Fortin, Trinidad. Um, I am a... Uh, before, well initially I used to uh, go around barbering, regular, I don't buy barber with Audi vehicle. And then for me I was like, you know, I need to upgrade, I need to give the people something different. You know, and I, that's how I came up with this. As a youth I hated um, going to the barber shop and waiting and sitting down for I like about three hours I had to sit down for a haircut. I was like, nah, I can't make this. And I say like, I started marking myself, started marking myself, and then I was like, you know what? I want to be a barber, and I come in with a difference now. Yeah. So what would have given you the inspiration to put a barber shop on wheels? So as I say, before I used to move around with a vehicle, with my, um, my, my kit and a chair, and it was really uncomfortable, like going from house to house, yeah, just the people settings. And I was like, but you know what? I want to carry my entire shop to a person's house. You know, that way they would save time. I would give them that comfort because I have AC, everything. We have proper light and everything, you know? And for me, I was like, yeah, I want to carry my whole shop anywhere I go. In. I could carry my entire business, any part of Trinidad or Tobago. So this is something really unusual. Tell us about some of the reaction you usually get when people see this masterpiece behind us. So most times people are in shock. Because I, I kind of now put on the um, logos and stuff on it, but before it was just a white vehicle. So when people open the door, in amazement, that's what, like, how, how you do this, you know? People, most people in amazement, that's the, like, they never see something like this before. But it's something more, you see in foreign, more England, yeah. But in China, at the time, I think it has like two other persons who doing something like this. So what are some services some of your customers can expect to get from this mobile barbershop? So um, I would be doing dyeing of the hair, um, eyebrows, normal mark and shave, fading. Um, as I say, we dye in here. Um, I want to get into something called SMP. That is where you um, put in a hairline for persons who have receding hairlines and stuff like that. Uh, eyebrow tinting and stuff like that. So contacting, how can people reach out to you? How, how can we reach out to you? Contact your social media pages and where are you located? Even though you're mobile, where are you located? So I'm located Point Fortin, I'm based Point Fortin, Trinidad. And um, for me, I'm willing to go anyway. Once the person is willing to pay, I'm willing to go any part of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, for my Instagram, it's skyscots underscore mobile barbershop. Um, and for TikTok, it's skyscots. Well, Kyle with a Z cuts, with a Z as well. And um, on Facebook is Kyle Marichu. 
So as a young barber, what are some motivational issues, um, motivational tips you, you want to give to any young barbers out here? For me, uh, in barbering, you have to perfect your craft before anything else. Practice, practice, practice. On YouTube, it have a set of videos. You could, it have um, a set of local barbers who just give out a set of um, cues. Sometimes just give um, little tips as to where you could perfect your craft. And for me, that's the most important thing. You have to be able to perfect the craft before anything else. So thank you for doing this interview with us. Keep the good work up. So viewers, we're going to take a look inside this mobile barbershop. All right, so tell us a bit of what we're seeing inside here at the moment. Can you repeat? Tell us a bit of what we're seeing inside here at the moment. Right, so we have, um, as I said, this was sick. We'll be doing any washing, the washing of the hair, dye and everything. We have the TV. What most people like seeing is this part of the TV, where it goes down and comes up. Yeah, so most people are fascinated by this part of the, um, the barbershop, where the TV goes up and down. Um, as I say, I have... Inside here we have normally have little snacks and stuff. Inside here we have storage for little um, products that I would have. Inside here products. Yeah, and to, well, to the back I would have my electrical and stuff like that. So in terms of building everything inside, did you do it yourself or you hired someone to do it? So I had to hire someone. I'm not a woodwork person. I had um, some guys, some Trinidad, someone did the um, woodwork, someone did the uh, countertop, someone did the lighting and stuff like that. Okay, great. So thank you once again for doing this interview with us. This is a really innovative and inspiring place to be in right now. So keep up the good work and keep it. All right, viewers, that was the Easter Monday car show highlight. So you would have seen it was a very, very fun field. It was very innovative. It was very eye-catching. You know, we would have had the sound off. We would have saw the family busting down the pot. And most importantly, what I would remember forever was that barbershop on wheels. So at this moment, viewers, we will be taking a short break. Don't go anywhere yet. Remember to share the live, share the live, share the live. We'll be right back.